This is the day. 
you take as many as you would like, but don't take them and put them on the shelf. If you take them, please give them to someone. Amen? Invite them to church. I believe it's time that we start to prepare the church, prepare our hearts for growth. We've been just like at a standstill because we've been waiting for the right time to do this. And I believe the time is now. God plays on my heart that now is the time we can go forward with this. We're going to also uh, uh, see about putting us a sign out here so they know that we are here. Yeah. Amen. We're going to put us a sign out here so they'll know that we are here. Uh, we've already discussed that with the property people and they, they said they don't see no problem with that. So we're going to be taking care of that real soon. But uh, we want you to understand that that this church is not my church. This is your church. I'm just here. I'm here for you. This is your church. Amen. It's for you too, you. It's your church too. <laughs> I know you're a truck driver. You're on the road a lot. But uh, but this is your church too. And every time you get home and you have the opportunity to come, we ask you to come and, and be with us because the kids, they need, they, they, they like this when they come here to that same, and I like them to do it, amen. And, and it's a whole lot better when you are backing them up on the, on the music. Y'all understand, right? Amen. amen. And so we're gonna be giving out, y'all have some of these today, amen, these flowers, amen. I wanna thank all our internet guests who are joining us today. We know that you guys are taking out of your time to join us by internet, and we want you to feel welcome we want you to know that we are we are your online church and we are here for you. You know how to reach us <coughs> should you need to reach us. We don't make it hard for you to locate us. So if you need to reach us, you I'm talking to you now and listen to us online. Because you are part of our church too. You are giving of your tithes and your offerings in this ministry, so you are part of our church. So we ask you that if you need us, you know how to reach us. We have we made ourselves available to you already. So take advantage of that should you need to. If you need special prayer by anything, feel free to contact us by email or by phone call. Amen. Now, for you that are here, I want you right now, and you know this by the end of it, I want you to clear your minds right now. I want you to make sure that you leave all your all the things that will bother you, all the things that will mess with your heart, your emotion. I want you to leave all that stuff right now and let it just go. Let that let that stuff go to sleep. You stay awake. <laughs> Amen. Let that stuff just just relax for a while and let your spirit begin to be alert. So you can hear what the Spirit of God is going to say to you today. Amen? Amen. We are not here to entertain you. We're here to minister to you. Amen. And as we minister to you, I want you to receive everything that God has for you. Amen? So we started on last Sunday that the Christians must take a stand for Christ. And we use Daniel as an example of taking a stand for Christ. Amen? Well, taking a stand for right, I put it that way, take a stand for right because Christ wasn't here at the time that Daniel was here. But Daniel took a stand for righteousness. Amen? And because he took a stand for righteousness, you know, I, 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 I did a little reading on that, and I, began, and, I, and I see that when Daniel was brought into captivity, how Daniel became popular with the king, Nebuchadnezzar. I was reading that and I said, wow, now I understand more and more about this thing. But not only did Daniel come popular, become popular with the king Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel caused all the wise men in life to be spared. Because he would not, because he, because when he saw the decree that the king Nebuchadnezzar had decreed, Concerning all the wise men, the, 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 the positions, the suits 
says in the in the in, the, in, the, in all these shandu, whatever they call themselves, he began to talk to the captain over the guard and say, "Hey, I don't know what's going on, but let me tell you something. Give me the opportunity to spend time with my God, and I can make known the king's dream that he will not destroy these." Men. There was a great, they was in danger of losing their own lives. Even Daniel and a, a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were all in danger of losing their lives because they were considered as wise men. And when I began to read that, I said, oh my God. And then I began to see that it was at the time when Daniel revealed the secret of the king's heart that the king began to recognize Daniel. And then we see that his son did the same thing after him. It was after Daniel revealed what God was saying to these kings that these kings was made to favor Daniel. God wants to favor you. Hallelujah. God wants to favor you now. Because you may not be Daniel, and you may have a name that is called Daniel. But the thing about it is that the same spirit that Daniel trusted in to reveal to him the secret of the of King Nebuchadnezzar's heart, that same spirit resides in you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so we can, and, 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 and get this folks, the type of prayers that we're praying on Thursdays and Fridays are the same way that Daniel prayed daily. He did it daily. Not just on two days, he did it daily. And let me tell you something. This type of prayer gave God the opportunity to put Daniel in a position that he can receive and interpret the secret things. Glory to God. In other words, this is how Daniel was able to understand the mind of King Nebuchadnezzar because he spent more time with God than he spent in his garden. <laughs> he spent more time with God than he spent walking around checking on his partners and his buddies. And because of that, his relationship with God became so secure that he knew that whatever he asked God, that God would grant it to him. And so he told the king, give me time. Give me a, give me a little time and I will reveal to you your heart or that what troubles your heart. And so he did. The king granted him time. And because of that, Daniel was able to take a stand for the thing that matters to God. And this is what God is looking at. You know what? I found out <coughs> after I started this series on last Sunday. As I took my child to school the, the other day, that, that Monday, and I saw, since she go to a Christian school, so I took her to, when I took her to school, and I saw on the desk there that the pastor of the church, he started a message also on Sunday by taking a stand. And I said, Lord, mercy. <laughs> and so when I, when I saw that, when I saw that, and I said, can I have one of these CDs? And you know, he was preaching along the same line that I'm preaching, but he but he, he, he came 
it from Nehemiah. Take, you know, take a stand to build the, to, to reestablish the wall. And I said, wow. I said, that's going to be my next topic. <laughs> Amen. But see, that showed me that when God spoke to me concerning taking a stand, he was not only speaking to me, he was speaking to other men of God at the same time about the same message, taking a stand in these last days. And then I heard someone else talk, preaching on taking a stand. Huh? Another pastor was doing it, yeah. So I heard it from three, from two other different pastors. Amen. Now, Kirk is not with us today, but I see Kirk's face right now. <laughs> Amen. He's listening to us right now. Amen. So I want you all to, 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 to just you know, prepare your heart to take, to take a, a, a firm, make a firm commitment to Christ. Make a firm commitment to do what's right, not because someone's watching you, not because someone is telling you to do it, Make it, because you know right from wrong. Make a firm stand for Christ because it's right in your own heart. But if you don't have no conviction, if you're not, if you're not convic convinced in your own heart to do right, then you're in trouble already. But if you make a decision to do right in your own heart, you're taking a stand for righteousness. And God is going to stand with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want y'all to know that I was at a, uh, I did a, a memorial service on yesterday. Sister Shirley, her brother, he went home to be with the Lord. And uh, they asked me to do the memorial service. Sister Shirley, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to serve your family. Yeah, I uh, thank God for that. And, and uh, we want, today I want us to pray for Sister Shirley because uh, she's, not, she's not been feeling good these last couple of days. We want to pray for her and ask God to strengthen her. Amen. But, you know what, there was something about this, we did this memorial service on the outside. It was in the park, it's in the, the garden downtown. And uh, and the people walked the street and when I gave the altar call, there were people gave their heart to the Lord walking the street. They, they stopped and, and listened to the whole service. Yeah. And then they gave their heart to the Lord. Yes. Amen. God, I'm telling you, God is doing something, folks. <laughs> and that's why it's so important when we make a bold, when we take a stand for Christ, let our life be an example, not only in our communication, but our action, what we do. Amen. That's what Daniel did. Daniel's life, he made, his life was a, what was a, was a, 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 a firm, he, his, his whole lifestyle demonstrated a full commitment to the call of God on his life. So, I want you to turn your Bible with me to Daniel chapter 6. We started on this on last Sunday. Glory to God. In Daniel chapter 6, it says, Jesus. It says here in verse number one, it says, It pleased Darius to set over the, the kingdom and hundred and twenty princes, <coughs> which should be over the whole kingdom, and over the three presidents, whom of whom now look at, of whom Daniel was the first, of whom Daniel was the first. Now Daniel was a Daniel was a captive. He wasn't a free man. He was a slave. But notice how God positioned Daniel. It was because of his lifestyle that even in captivity, Daniel was able to live for God and God promoted him in the time where 
where it seems like it was not possible, yet the favor of God was upon this man's life. Because he not only uh, spent time with God, but he prayed and communicated with God daily. Three times a day, he went to his chamber, to his room, and he kneeled down in his chamber, and he focused his attention toward Jerusalem and toward the temple, and he prayed to God every day, three times a day. Now, I think he probably did more than just 10 minutes. <laughs> but we are only been asked to do it 10 minutes. And you know what God, God showed me that this was, he was doing it because he wanted to, he wanted to get the people minds back set on prayer. So many people have not been praying and God is going to get them back sensitive to a lifestyle of prayer. Amen? Because how many know that sometimes we get up in the morning we don't have time to pray? Because we, we wake up late, or sometimes we, then we get in such a rush trying to get ready to, to especially if we're, if we're working on a job, we, 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 get, we rush to get ourselves together, and we get our shower, we get our clothes on, <coughs> then we're out of the house. Don't have time to spend no time with God. Don't have time to say, Lord, thank you for watching over me last night. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Don't even have time. But on the road, you're on the road, you might, you might say something to God. Sometimes you feel you try to meditate on what you got to do when you get to work. And you don't even think about saying nothing to God even now. But the thing about it is that God is calling us to prayer. There's a lot of things going on in the world today, folks. And, and I saw on the internet this morning about uh, in uh, Indiana about this uh, this uh, acid spill in the air, and people they tasted it in their mouth, and many have become uh, sick by it. They, they 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 clean out the area, they vacated that area because of the because of the the smell was so strong. And then don't forget about in China. The other uh, last week, this big explosion. And now the death toll has come up to over eighty some people, over hundred some now, and it's still rising. People, people are still missing. Amen. So we, we, God has called us to pray, not only for us, but He's called us. To, he called us to pray for the for the world, because the world is in darkness, and if we, as the children of God. If we are called to be the light of the world, then we need to take a stand for righteousness and begin to pray like God instructed us to pray without ceasing. This is not something that we do just because we want to be blessed. This is something we do because we are blessed. Amen. We don't pray to seek the hand of God. What God, God, you do this and I'll do this. You give me this and I'll do this for you. We don't pray for the, to, to get God to extend his hand. We pray because he has extended his hand. <coughs> and this is what a lot of people don't realize. You are blessed. God has given you everything that you need. And I, I guarantee you, you don't have, you don't, you don't really want for nothing right now. Your every need is met. Why? Because you're blessed. Because God has blessed you. God has done some things so powerful in your life that you can't wait to share it with someone that don't have what you have. How many people do you know that don't have a, a place to, to sleep right now? And all they have to do is just hear how God healed you and set you free, and all of a sudden, you give them hope once again. You are like, when you begin to share your testimony with the homeless, they, they might, they might be, they, you might not even want to be around, you might not even want to, the, 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 
in a, in a pleasant. But God has placed something inside of you to speak into their life that can change their destiny. But you have to have a heart to stand for righteousness because, see, Jesus, he didn't come to save them that was in the church. He came to save them that was out of the church. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. He didn't come to heal those that didn't need no healing. He came to bring healing to those that were needing healing. So what are we going to do today? Are we just going to say, God, I thank you for watching over my soul and I'm not worried about the others around me, but as long as my soul is all right, I'm happy. <laughs> no, folks. We need to be more, we need to be concerned about our brothers, our sisters who are less fortunate than us. Daniel lifestyle showed that, and he Daniel was a blessed man. But his lifestyle showed he was more concerned about the people around him more than himself. Because when his life became threatened, he did not allow that threat to stop him from interceding for the people that he loved. He still went to his window and he kneeled down to pray even when he knew that it could cost him his life. He still had a heart for the hurting people. He had a heart to serve God regardless of his circumstances that he was experiencing. That he was going to experience. Because see, there was a, a spirit of jealousy surrounding the men that Daniel was working with because the king had elevated Daniel above those free men. The president, the princess, the, the <coughs> and all those people. But look right here in, in verse number, verse number two, Daniel chapter six, verse number two says, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princess might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then, then Daniel was. No said, then Daniel was what? Preferred. Then Daniel was preferred above the president. Now you know that has that had to be God. That had to be God. Daniel, a prisoner, and was preferred above the president. Woo! Glory to God. And you know that didn't come by Daniel just living a, 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 a just a, a simple life. That came by Daniel spending time with God. And God, you know, when God told me to, when God told me to, to call the people to pray, when God told me to call the people to pray, and I said, God, what should I tell them? Because they, they, these people don't 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 want to pray. People don't want to pray. They want to get. They, 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 they think they've outgrown prayer. They think they can become grown so they don't have to pray no more. They think that everything is handed to them on a silver platter now. <laughs> and God said they have become so desensitized through the media. And I, I will use the media to resensitize my people. But, and I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? He said, this is what he spoke to my heart, folks. He said, I want you to, I want you to pray. And I want you to teach them to pray. I want you to pray three times a day. And for those that will join you, those that will, will join you, I will make them sensitive to my spirit. I will
will make them sensitive to my voice. What the devil has meant for evil in their life, as they become sensitive to me, I will bring them to a place of inner peace because I will become acquainted with them once again through prayer. And I said, God, but what if they don't pray? God, then God and I'm just telling you that what God said to me. He said, He said, tribulation is coming. He said, trials and testing is coming. He said, but those that will stay close to me, those that will, will, will stay close to me in prayer and communicating with me, God said, I will protect them. And I said, God, well, I'll tell them, but I can't make nobody do nothing. But I'll tell them. Amen. And so that's how this all started, folks. It started by hearing what God was saying. Now, this is at the beginning of the year. This is at the beginning of the year. Because, see, the, at the first of the year, we normally pray, what, 21 days. First of the year, we normally pray 21 days. We, we normally fast 21 days. But God said, I don't want you to fast 21 days this year. He said, I want you to fast seven days this year. And then, after the seven-day fast, I want you to fast three days out of each month this year. And I want you to pray and fast three days out of each month this year. And I said, whoa, God, that's a lot. Of and, I, and God said, because the world is trying to put me out of the church and my people, they are not being sensitive to my leading and how I instruct them. He said, but if you would teach them prayer. Mm. Oh, glory to God. Mm. I will cause my people to be resensitized to my spirit that they will hear my voice, that when danger would come, that I can warn my people that they will be free from the danger if they will listen to me. I can turn their hearts from the direction that they are going. And I said, okay, God. And you know, when God told me to do this, I can see now why that God has asked this of us. Look at the danger that the world is facing, folks. Yeah. Look at the danger that the world is facing. You know, driving down the highway and fires is coming across the highways and, and jumping on cars and burning cars. You know, that's unusual. But we seen it, didn't we? And these animals all of a sudden started to attack people. Have y'all noticed that? And all of this stuff that began to happen, this is a time for us to be sensitive to God, folks. This is a time for us to be sensitive to God. And I, that's why I like this story about Daniel. Daniel showed us how to become sensitive to God. He showed us how to become sensitive to God. Notice what it says in verse number 3. <coughs> Daniel chapter 6 and verse number 3. He said, Then this Daniel was preferred above the president, the princes, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Because the excellent spirit was in him. You know, sometimes when God is calling us to pray, there's always something that's going to uh, come into our life. Just like the week before last, like this past week, I had a powerful prayer this week. How many of y'all had a good prayer this week? Yeah. Amen. 
But last week, I mean, I tell you, I struggled to pray. Every time I wanted, my, 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 the time came around at 9 in the morning, 12 in the morning, 3 in the morning, every time those hours came around, the, I, I mean, it was, a, it was really hard for me to just focus and pray during those times on that week for last. Amen? But last week, I mean, I had a powerful time of prayer. Yes. Powerful. Yes. Hallelujah. Breakthrough after breakthrough. Why? Because even though I had a hard time week before last, I didn't quit because it was hard. I pushed my way through the hard times. And because I pushed my way through the hard times, the next week it was, I could experience, I experienced the, the, the power of the breakthrough that because I didn't quit when it seemed hard, I stayed focused. Even though it was difficult, yet I stayed focused on what God had called me to do. And you know what I, you know what I tell y'all? Don't, don't be discouraged when you can't do it on time. Yes. <laughs> Week before last, that was me all the way. <laughs> I couldn't, it was hard for me to pray on, on time. Every time it was time to pray, it seemed like something was always happening. And, I, and I'm always, in my, in my business, I, it's like I'm always arriving on my, on my business at a time when I should be praying. It's like everything was just backwards. But I didn't quit, folks. And because I didn't quit, last week we had breakthrough in the spiritual realm. And I know the enemy is trying to stop me from praying. I know what he's doing for you. I know what he's doing for you. And so these lessons is very important. People, I don't, I, 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 I'm nothing without God. I'm just a man just like you. I'm a human being just like you. But with God, I can do all things. And it's not just my, my, me being a preacher. It's because I love him. Because I, I, I trust him. Because I'm, I'm learning to rely on him when I can't rely on no one else. You see, if I didn't have that relationship with him, I wouldn't be here today. Because the devil tried to take me out on many occasions. How many of you ever trouble, have, 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 have walk around being trouble in your mind, and the devil keep on talking about, you can't do it, you might want to kill yourself. Suicide thoughts. Because what the, because when the enemy knows that you have an assignment on your life, he's coming after you in many ways. And he put people in your life that you love and you respect. Then all of a sudden, they begin to put you down. But when you begin to look to God to God, I give up. I'm nothing without you. When you begin to look to him with confidence that he hears you, all of a sudden, the light begins to shine bright, and you begin to see your way out of your troubles. The thing that the enemy tried to use to destroy you, all of a sudden, it becomes your stepping stone. Glory to God. And you begin to experience the peace that's a path of all understanding. And it will begin to bring you to a place where you can sit back and say, God, if it had not been for you on my side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes. I'm riding down the road the other day, or yesterday, and, uh, and I'm seeing, you know, we have on our way back. We was out of town yesterday. My wife and I, and my, wife, my wife and my baby, we went out of town yesterday. We, got all, we didn't make it back to 4.30 last night. It was a long drive. Oh. 
But we made it back at full 30 last night. And on our way back, it was late. And I saw on the other side of the road four, five, five trucks and a fleet of police cars and ambulance. And I'm thanking Lord. I wonder, did the people know you? And my baby, she said, Daddy, pray for them. My baby said that. Pray for them. Can you see that? And I said, Lord. And I began to, and, and, I, I, and she began to pray with me. And I said, Lord. Amen. See, not only am I being sensitive to God because of my obedience to God, but my daughter, three year old, is saying, Daddy, pray for them. Now that really touched my heart, folks. Now how many of us that God can use right now when we see danger and God said, pray for them? Amen? And when I, when I see stuff like that and I begin to think, you know, especially when I see big trucks on the road and, they, and I see them falling on the side of the road and I think about my my friend Yuri, my piano player, my musician, he's on the road all the time in his truck. And I said, Lord, keep your hand upon Yuri. Bring him back safe to his family. And I said, thank you for it, Father. You, to be sensitive to God, folks, we see things that we don't, we take very lightly. But when we see the seriousness of it and don't, and don't pray about it, it's just like, God, I could care less about those people. And I'm going to ask you a question today. Are you your brother's keeper? Yes, you are. You may not feel like you're your brother's keeper, but you are your brother's keeper. That's why God said, Pray. Pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so what it says right here in, in chapter 2, chapter 6, verse number 3, it showed me that Daniel, his relationship with God, developed in him an excellent spirit. <laughs> His relationship created within him an excellent spirit. His communication with God caused him to have favor like no man has ever had. And it caused him to, to be placed in a position above all those that should have had the position because of their status in life. But a slave received honor and was given honor above them that was free because of his prayer life, because of his relationship with God. Glory to his name. You got to understand, folks, your relationship with God is, is very important. Very important. Because you don't know where you're going to be at next week. And you may need God's favor. You may need God's hand. You don't know what your loved one is going to be going through next week. And you're going to want God to hear you when you call upon his name. Oh my God. I want you to turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6.
And I want us to look here. I want us to look here at verse number. Verse number 10. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 10 says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He never told us to be strong in ourselves, but in the Lord. And then he tells us in verse number 11, he tells us to put on the whole armor of God. That we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. See, Paul understands that if he wasn't spending time with God in prayer, that he would be overcome by the evil forces in the world. But because of his relationship with God, he was able to stand against the evil forces in the world. Look at verse number, verse number 12. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in hot places. These are the things that Daniel was fighting against, folks. And this is what Daniel was standing against even when a perfect spirit was found in Daniel. It was found in him because he had a relationship with God that he would not stop when pressure came upon him from the outside world. Because those people that was working with Daniel was not working with Daniel. They were working against Daniel. They was working with a spirit of jealousy. They were working with a spirit of anger. They were working with a spirit of bitterness. And they were working with a spirit of pride. They were all working against Daniel. And it was these same spirits that we are talking about right now. The principalities, the powers, and the rulers of the dark of this world, and the spiritual witness in high places, working through men trying to destroy the man of God. But the man of God, his relationship with God, enabled him to stand. Mm. His relationship gave him the ability to stand against the powers that was working against him. So we see right here that if we're going to stand for Christ in these last days, we have to understand why we're standing. If we don't understand why we're standing, then we still can be overcome by the forces of darkness. Because see, without knowledge, the Bible says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. What do y'all think? Are you ready to, to take a bold stand for, for the kingdom of God? Yes. Are you ready to are you ready to look at your life and say, God, I never could have made it if it wasn't for you? It's because of you, Lord, that I'm here today. How many can look over your life and you see how many times that the enemy tried to destroy you, tried to, tried to put you out? I can count them on my hand how many times the devil tried to destroy me. But you know what? My love for God and for his people sustained me, kept me, and is still keeping me today. You see, I have a love for each and every one of you that that ties me together with you and with God. You see, if you look at, what is this, a triangle? If you look at this 
triangle is all, it already has a high point and it has two low points. This high point, I look at that high point of that triangle, that, that top pivot point, I look at that to be God. That top point of that triangle, that's God to me. And then when I come down to the right side and to the left side, the right side is me. And the left side is you. And then guess, it comes from God to me to you, then back to God. Can y'all see that? And when that is distorted, when that is broken, that means the relationship has been disconnected. But if that relationship is in right standing, there's no separation in that triangle. That triangle is a perfect fit, and God is working in that to bring us into a spirit of unity, in a spirit of power, in a spirit of might, that when the enemy comes against us, no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every coming to rise up against us in judgment, we shepherd them, because this is God's heritage within us. God has given us the ability to stand regardless of what the enemy is saying. He said, after you've done all the things, stand therefore, have your mind girl about with the truth. He tells you how to stand. What are you talking about your boys girl about? When he's talking about boys, he's not talking about your waist. Because the Bible says, girl, the Lord of your mind. Your mind is your Lord that God is talking about. Glory to God. you got to have truth in your mind. So if your mind don't understand truth, how can you make a stand against things that you don't know about? you got to have truth. And God said, girl, the Lord of your mind. If your mind is burned with truth, now, friend, you got something to stand on. And then he said, put on the breastplate of righteousness and shine your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, take the shield of faith that you may quench all the fire of gospel of the Now I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready right now. Because that's a lot of witchcraft working against the church today. There's a lot of demonic working against the church today. If you are a born again believer, and if you're having a good day every day, then you're not following Christ. <laughs> if you're having a good day every day, then you're not making no impact on the kingdom of darkness as a child of God. But if you're making an impact on the kingdom of darkness, not every day is going to be perfect for you. That's going to be some. That's going to be some challenges. And you have to overcome those challenges. Amen. That's why God said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality. And he tells us to put on the whole arm of God. For we stand, and then he said, have me all stand, stand. Stand. How do you want to stand when the principality and witchcraft is going to come in at you? How do you want to stand? Go, go lay down your baby, ball them not and cry like a baby. I don't want to punch that wish I was. I just wish I could just die. I don't want to. I don't, I don't want to be here no more. There's got to be something else better than life than this. I don't want to go through this no more. No, you need to buckle up. You need to clear your mind. And you need to start putting the truth in your mind. What is the truth? The Word of God. The Word of God is your truth. Gird up the Lord with the truth. The Lord of your mind. And begin to stand on the promises of God. Don't let the devil defeat you. Start praying. Start seeking the face daily. Don't just do it on Tuesday, on Thursday and Friday. Do it every day if you can. Every day, nine in the morning, twelve in the three in the evening, and watch how your life change. I mean, you begin to be act, you begin to take up on yourself the spirit of Daniel when you start praying three times a day. All of a sudden, you begin to you begin to interpret. You begin to understand dreams. You begin to understand visions. How that happen? Because you are acting in the same manner that Daniel acted when it came upon him to understand these things. That's how he understood them. He spent time with God daily, three times a day, and in his time with God. It, I'm telling you, it caused him to understand the spiritual things, the secret 
weet. But the enemy don't want you to pray. He don't want you to understand. So all of a sudden he's going to bring someone around you. Then that person going to make you feel like nothing. Because they're not for you. They're against you. They're going to talk about you. Come on, let's pray. I ain't got time to pray. Let's go have it. I ain't going to say it. <laughs> But you remember, you're a child of God. You're a child of God. And don't let even your brother, your sister, your husband, or your wife stop you from serving God. If my wife tell me that she's not going to go to church no more, I'm saying, that's got nothing to do with me. I'm going to serve God regardless. You gotta be willing to take a stand. You gotta be willing to take a stand. And when you take a stand, just remember that you don't stand by yourself. Because Jesus is with you. Jesus is with you. And the thing that I love about it the most, that when I call upon him, I know that he hears me. And when I know that he hears me, I know I have my petition that I desire for you. God is so good. God is so good. Oh, friend. So it hasn't been all the stand, stand, therefore have you long heard about what the truth. And when you find yourself coming under pressure, I'm getting ready to close now. When you find yourself coming under a lot of pressure, see what it is that is causing the pressure to come. What door have you allowed open in your life? Then close that door. Repent. Because sin causes the door to open. Repent. And that door will be, be shut. Amen. Then you can take a bold stance that in the name of Jesus Christ, I apply the blood from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Now, Father, there's witchcraft coming against me, and in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind this spirit of witchcraft right now. I break this power off of me in the name of Jesus. Leave my house right now. Leave my family. Leave my children right now in the name of Jesus. Get out of my wife and touch her no more in the name of Jesus. I bind you and I trap you under the bottom of my foot. You have no power in my household. I am the king of this house. I am the Lord of this house. Jesus Christ is the king of kings and the Lord of all. Go! God begin to show you in the spiritual realm the effects that you're having. 
I mean, I did that. I did that one night. I walked in my yard. I come against every spirit of witchcraft, the spirit of lust, the spirit of perversion. I come against you in the name of Jesus. I break you, spirit of pornography. I come against you now in the name of Jesus. I lose you from your assignment concerning me, God. I, and I began to. And then that night when I went to bed, when I went to bed, all of a sudden I'm in the spirit, and I'm like in a football field, a big old football field, and there was, and I'm walking out of this, uh, out of the dugout into the stadium. And out in the other side of the stadium, there was two demons. It was, it, 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 like, uh, and, and, and it was, it had that V-shaped head and that, like, lion. And they started walking toward me. Now, now, now notice, because I had my prayer life intact with God, because I'm communicating with God, one of the demons, they jumped out to the side, and they ran, and they come in behind me, and they got me centered, and I'm still walking, minding my own business, and all of a sudden, they begin to charge, gonna, gonna, ram, gonna, gonna, gonna take me in the center, just ram me right in the center, and all of a sudden, when they come up, get ready to, to ram me in the center, I leap up, and they run into one another and destroy myself. What happened? God protected me. Why? Because of my relationship with him. Amen? Amen? Because of my relationship with him. God protects you when you are praying. If you are not praying, you don't have no protection, folks. This is what it's all about. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Father, I thank you for this time together. And I thank you, Lord God, for those that are listening to us on the internet. And I pray, Father, that this lesson has made a lot of sense to each of us, that we will begin to apply to our life, that we will not give in, that we will not quit. God, you want to you want, you want restore a, a, a perfect spirit within us, like you did Daniel. You want to have that, but you want to prefer us above, above our enemies, like you did Daniel. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. We glorify you and we say, God, here we are. Let your will be done in our life in earth as it is in heaven. And God, we thank you and we bless you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Folks, this what I'm teaching you. You don't get it everywhere. You don't get this everywhere. I'm teaching you how to maintain your Christian walk in the midst of Dire situations. Because I did it, I know it can happen. You can do it. Yes. You can do it. No weapon formed against you should prosper. God has made you the head and not the tail. Yes. He's called you to rise above the circumstances, not to let the circumstances uh, uh, destroy you by running up on you and, and getting you and destroying you. God will cause you when the circumstances come against you, He will cause you to leap up and they will destroy themselves. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that's exciting. That's exciting. Knowing that we serve a God that wants to set us, that wants to heal us, that wants us to walk in the victory every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's available. It's available. But are you ready? Are you willing? It's, it's there. It's here. For us. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, let me stop. I gotta stop now. We got nothing, we got next Sunday to do it again. We got next Sunday to do it again. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and prepare for our tithes and offers. Amen. We're going to prepare for our tithes and offerings right now. Glory to God. And for you that are, that are uh, online church, if you're part of our online church, and uh, we ask you also to take part in this area of the service. Because I want you to get the full benefit of the anointing that rests upon this service today. And it happens when we take part in the whole service, in the giving of our tithes and our offerings. Amen. Don't just listen to the message and be blessed and then just walk away saying, wow. No. Take part in the message. Give, give, up, give, give to God because God has just given you some spiritual tools to help you 
to overcome the powers of darkness. Amen. What one of the best ways to overcome the power of darkness in finances is to give. Is to give. Amen. The Bible says, give and shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake together, run it over, shall be given to your bosom. Amen. I know when my wife and I have financial challenges, what we do, we find God, God directs us to, to plant seed in a certain ministry. Every time we have financial challenges, and we plant whatever God tells us into that ministry, and sometimes more, and next thing we know, we have financial breakthrough coming at us on every side. Amen. Every need is met according to the rich and glory by Christ Jesus. How does that happen? Because we learn the art of giving and receiving. Not just giving, but giving and receiving. What do you mean? Giving and receiving. It's just like planting seed in the ground. You don't get no harvest unless you plant the seed in the ground. So when you look at seed time and harvest, giving and receiving. Amen. Plant the seed. And at the period of time, you're going to receive from the seed that you plant. If I plant one grain of corn in the ground, I'm not going to just reap one grain of corn from that grain of corn that I plant. That one grain of corn is going to be a stalk. And on that stalk, there are five, six-year-old corn on that stalk. And how many grains of corn on each, on each uh, year of corn? My God, there's a lot of them. They ain't good, too. <laughs> I could just taste them right now. <laughs> Sweet corn, glory to God. Amen. So when we plant our seed, folks, we're saying, God, I trust you. Amen. And see, God don't need to try to manipulate you to give your time to your office. If you don't know that God wants you to give your time to your office, then you need to learn what it's all about. Amen. Maybe one day I might should teach on that, on, on, them, on, on tithing and, and giving tithing and offering. Because I don't like talking about money that much. That's not why I don't preach about that money. But sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to. Amen. I might just bring someone in here and let them do the teaching on it. They'll probably be better. Amen. But anyway, those of you that are given by the internet, go to my website, LarryRookMinistries.com, and plant your seed there. Also, if you have a prayer request, send us your prayer request also. Amen. Send us your prayer request. And then if you have a uh, uh, if, you, if you're going to send it in through the mail, through the mail system, remember uh, to uh, send it to a P.O. Box, Glamour Ministries, P.O. Box, 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Send in your offering through the mail system, and we will receive your offering, and God will be glorified. Amen. Now, uh, make, make sure you, if you have a prayer request, send us your prayer request. If you have a testimony, also send us your testimony. Amen. For those who give it right now, and for those who give it by the end of the day, those who send it in by the mail, let's pray and release the blessing upon them right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for the people that are giving today, whether they be over the internet, the internet church, Lord God, or whether they be here with us. God, we ask it in the name of Jesus that you will pour out of your spirit upon us like never before, Father, upon our finances. God, let the spirit of poverty be destroyed because of the anointing. And let the yoke be destroyed. Let the burden be lifted, Father, that we will experience the spirit of abundance upon us. God, because you said that you, you, you came that we may have life, that we may have it more abundantly. And you tell us in the book of, of Deuteronomy chapter 28, you said, and blessing I will bless you God, I just thank you, Father, that the blessings is here now. That the blessings are here now. And we bless you, Lord God. We thank you. We give you glory and praise. Now, Father, I release the blessing upon the finances of those that are given. I cancel every financial curse in the name of Jesus. That God, because they people are willing to give their tithes and offering, let every financial curse be lifted now in Jesus' name. And because they have given their tithes and their offering, Father, let the blessing begin to rest upon them. And I give you glory and praise for it in Jesus' name. And glory to God. We give you praise. Amen and amen. 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 See, God knows those that are giving, and God knows those that are still yep. Amen. And so God wants to bless you, but he wants you to do your part. Amen. God can bless you if you're still So if you're giving right now, go ahead on by the internet and give by the internet. You're going, you're going right down my address. That's P.O. Box 
That Bad Burger Ministries, P.O. Box, 417913, sitting in through the mail. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Those of you that are here today, you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life right now. You want to go special prayer. We're going to pray for you right now. Amen. You have a special prayer request. We're going to pray for you right now. Pray for you then. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift these children and their dads, their moms up before you, Father. And I ask you, Lord God, that you would touch, that you would minister to them, Father. That you would cause them to be, Father, strong in every area of their lives. And I pray, Father, that you would cause a spirit of obedience upon this family. God, that you would not withhold anything from them, Father, that you have prepared for them to receive in these last days, God. Let every work of darkness be broken and destroyed that will come against them as they walk in obedience toward you. And Father, I, I thank you and I give you glory and praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, honey. Amen. And Father, I pray, Father, that your divine protection over his dad, Father, again. And I ask you, Lord God, that you will watch over this young man as he enters into his competitions, Lord God. And, and God, I pray, Father, that you would help him to guard his heart. That you, God, just, just let your angel be encamped around by him, that his heart will be protected, Lord God. And Father, I just ask you, Lord God, to let him be everything you created him to be. And bring him back safe, Father. In Jesus' name, I give you glory and praise, Lord. Amen. Father, I thank you, Father, for Sister Lydia. I pray, Father, and I ask you, Lord God, that you would touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Every blessing that you have prepared for her to receive and walk in, Father, at this time in her life, God, for the enemy has been for evil, let it be turned around for your glory. And Father, I bless her. And I counsel every assignment against her help. I release divine help and healing over her right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't pray, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord God, for a special, a special work to take place in their hearts. God, you know them, you created them, there's nothing about them that is a secret to you. And now, Father, I'm asking you, Lord God, that you would open up their eyes of understanding that they will know what is the hope of your calling. What is the exceeding greatness of your power to us who believe according to the workings of your mighty power. And God, with the end is meant for evil concerning their life, concerning their health, concerning their well-being, God, I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will let your light rest upon them, Father, and that you will let your word be a lamp to their feet, light to their path. Show them the way that they should go, Father. And if they follow you correctly, Lord God, Father, you will, you will establish them and peace, and God, you will bring them to a place, Father, where they will, that had nothing, God, you will show them, Father, that, that, that everything that they have need of is already available. But God, I ask you in the name of Jesus, because God, I see what you're looking for. You look for a spirit of obedience. You look for a, a willing spirit to follow you, to follow righteousness. And God, I ask you to establish that in their hearts, in the name of Jesus. And God, and I know you won't do it unless they ask you to do it. And then when they ask you, Father, even if they're not serious, it's still not going to happen. God, I ask you to minister to their hearts and give them the peace that's a pass of all understanding. That when they talk to you, Father, when they ask you for something, Father, that they will have confidence that you hear them. And when they are confident, God, that you hear them, there will be nothing that you will withhold from them. I know that from experience myself, Father, because I once was homeless myself, and I know what it's like. I was once without myself, didn't have a place to stay. God, I know what you can do for a person if they will really trust you. And so, Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus that you would touch their hearts, that you would touch their lives, that you would help them to make right choices. 
And I give you praise and I give you glory for it, Father. Now in Jesus' name. God, they want to be united together. They want to be as one. Forgive them of their sins. Forgive them, Lord. And create in them a right spirit. And renew in them a clean heart. And help them to understand the value of relationship. Help them to understand the, the importance of being true to one another. Help them to understand the value of love and compassion. And help them also to understand the pain of rejection and hurt. God, I ask this in Jesus' name. And Father, deliver them from the power of darkness. Deliver them and set them free. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you right now in the name of Jesus for a supernatural work in their minds and in their hearts. I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. And I give you glory and I give you praise for it. Amen. Amen. Have y'all been born again? Have y'all been living for God at all? You back to it? Are you ready to dedicate your life to the Lord? Or will you be serious when you do it? What do you attend church? You don't have a church?
I want to change. I can't do it by myself. I've tried and I've miserably failed. Today, I'm asking you for help. Help me to change. Help me to live for you. And I thank you for it now. Jesus, I make you the Lord of my life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this God. And I thank you for what you're doing in our life. Today, God, I'm asking you for a complete turnaround. I command Amy to be kept around by them. I cancel every mind assignment. I apply the blood of Jesus Christ from the crown of the head to the soul of their feet. And God, with the end of this evil concerning them, concerning their well-being, God, let it turn around for your glory. I bless them and I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, I'm going to tell you like I tell everybody that's saved in this church. If you give me a year, like I said earlier, your whole life is going to change mentally, emotionally, socially, physically, in every area of your life, financially, every area of your life will be changed. And the people that thought that you would never make it, all of a sudden, they're going to look at you and they're going to say, and you the one that will stand on the corner of the pan for, for, for food? And he said, yes, it was me. Well, what happened to you? Jesus happened to me. Jesus delivered me. And he changed my life. And today, I'm not homeless. Today, I'm not paying for food. Today, I have a home. Today, I'm free from work. But where am I going to sleep? You understand what I'm saying? When I was in your shape, I didn't have a place to stay. I, was, I had a car, and I backed my car back off into the woods. And I said, God, look what you done did to me. I blame God for it. I said, God, look what you done did to me. I don't have a place to stay, don't have food to eat. And, and he said, and you know what he said? He didn't get mad at me for blaming him. He said, son, be holy, for I am holy. And I said, okay, God, I'll be holy. I'm fussing him now because I got his attention. I'm beginning to fuss him. I said, I'll be holy, but give me a place to stay. And he said, son, look across the field. Now I looked across that kind of field in Alabama. And across that cotton field, there was an old block house that no one had lived in for years. Grass had grown up all around, and then the house was full of trash. And God said, that's your place to stay. And so I went and looked at it, and I know who owned the, the property, and I told the man I want to rent that place. I didn't have no money to rent the place. So God even gave me the people to pay the rent, to turn the light on and everything for me until I was able to pay myself. If you turn your heart to God sincerely, God will turn his heart toward you sincerely. And everything that you're struggling with in life, God will turn around. And I'm telling you right now, I see a turnaround in your life. I see it right now. But you got to want it. You got to want it bad enough that you're going to do what it, you got to start doing the right things to make it happen. And not because someone is watching you. You got to do it because you know it's right. Honesty is the best policy. Now, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to eat at now? What kind of money you got to buy some food with? How long have you been out of prison? 30 days? And y'all just got back together? Let me ask you a question. From this day forward, will y'all be true to one another? Will y'all be committed 
not only to you want to know, but will y'all be committed to God? I'm going to buy y'all lunch today. I'm going to see if you mean business. I'm going to take money out of my pocket right now and I'm going to buy you guys lunch. And if you guys are serious, not only will this buy you lunch, God got some more things coming down the line for you. This is a test. We're back in here Sunday at 3, but we're also here Tuesdays at 6 30. Let me be one of these So you don't forget. Okay? Let his understanding be fruitful. Oh, 
and give you glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Let's pray for those that are, that are with us on the internet now. Father, we thank you for those that are with us on the internet. We ask you, Father, that you would touch each and every one of them, Lord God, right now. I release the anointing now, Father, for those women that are listening on the internet, Father, that, that, that's concerned about their marriage, their relationship, their men that are in their life, God. I'm asking you, Father, in the name of Jesus, let these women take a bold stand and not give in for, 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 for anything but for righteousness. And God, I ask in Jesus' name that these men that, have, that are standing together for their wives, God, that they will not give in for anything, but they will continue to stand for righteousness. And God, I thank you, Father, for salvation being wrought all across this listening audience. That people's hearts are being knitted together, just like these two would just be knitted together. And God, your name is being glorified because we are yielding from our way when we begin to follow your way. So we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And may God bless you all. Amen. And I want you all to remember, Tuesday night, 6.30, we have church service. We ask you to come if you can. Amen. And all you intercessors, don't you forget, Wednesday night, we meet totally for intercessors. Amen. We want you to join us online for intercessors. Amen. Intercessor time. God bless you. We'll see you on next, next Tuesday. God bless you. Bye-bye.